Hey guys, it's Mike with What Will You Survive and today's video is way different from the usual stuff I put out. Today I'm going to show you how to make one of my favorite beverages, Cafe Con Leche, which is Cuban coffee with milk. If you've been to South Florida, you may have come into contact with this drink and you know how delicious it is. If you haven't, I suggest you try it because I think you may discover a delectable treat. This is What Will You Survive. Before we get started, you may be thinking, why in the hell are you doing a cooking show? You're supposed to be talking about survival. I promise you, it will be related. Just stick with me. So getting started, you need four things. You need water, coffee, sugar, and milk. The coffee you want to use is an espresso coffee. You can make a similar beverage with standard coffee, but believe me when I tell you, it's not the same. I'll include links to the coffee I use in the description below. So what does this have to do with survival? Well, my goal for the website, my videos, everything I try to do is not to get people to just survive, but to thrive. So making this beverage is a symbol of everything we have today that we could lose if we're not prepared. Will you die without this? No. Hell, you might even improve your health. I'm a firm believer that one can live the life of luxury even after the world has gone to hell. We just gotta prepare a little bit. So with that said, let's break down this drink as we go along and see how we can solve the problems of what to do in the tough times to continue to enjoy this beverage. First and foremost is the water. You need to have clean water. Without it, don't even bother worrying about the coffee. Get a good filter for your home. I like my gravity fed filter. Check out my article on great water gear in the description below. For me right now, I'm going to make two cups of the coffee. Uh, for the sake of time, I'm going to use this standard coffee maker. However, in the event I have no power, I will resort to boiling water and using a French press like this one. The coffee for this is important, and I know that I'm able to make this for you due to the delicate and intricate logistical system that we take for granted. I'm using two and a half tablespoons of coffee for my drink. If something catastrophic were to happen and I could no longer go to the store for this, one thing I could do is rely on a stockpile of this product to last me as long as I decide to stock for. One of these cans lasts me about a month. So as far as planning goes, that's a good starting point. Every can I buy at this size gets me about a month of coffee, but I still know that this is a finite resource. It will eventually run out. A second solution I could rely upon is growing my own coffee. Now I do not live in the mountains of Colombia or Guatemala. My climate isn't as friendly to coffee as theirs is, but that doesn't mean it's impossible. I can create what's called a wallapini, which is an underground greenhouse, and grow coffee in there. In all actuality, this is probably my best bet. How many coffee trees do you need? Well, the average is between 16 to 18 trees to supply the average American coffee drinker for a year. That requires a space of around 200 square feet, which isn't that much when you really think about it. The next ingredient is sugar. This requires refined sugar, and you'll see why when we add the coffee to it. There are a lot of other sweeteners, but if I want to get actual sugar, I need to stockpile a lot of it. Uh, and two, I need to find ways to make my own. One method is growing and processing sugarcane. That's not realistic where I live, though it would be awesome if I did. Uh, another method is extracting sugar from beets. Sugar beets, to be exact. They look weird compared to beets you're probably used to seeing. To get sugar from them, you need to first thinly slice the beets and cook them in water until they're tender. Uh, then strain the pulp from the juice and boil that juice until it's a honey consistency and then let it cool and the sugar will start to crystallize. And then you just remove the sugar, break it up until you have what looks like this. <laughs> uh, it's important to note that only about 17% of the beet weight will be turned into sugar, so you plan on growing a lot of beets. You can do something similar with maple syrup, but that requires maple trees, which not everyone has access to. So let's move on. 
For this drink, I've seen many recipes that call for a third cup of sugar. I'm not as eager to get diabetes, so I'm going to use a quarter cup. I've found that this amount works just as well. Uh, so once the coffee is brewed, you want to add about a teaspoon of the coffee to the sugar and stir it. It should start to get a crumbly consistency. Once you get to that point, continue adding the coffee in half teaspoon increments until the consistency is more of a sugary glaze. The consistency will go from crumbs to dough to icing to glaze. Once you get a glaze, it's time to heat up our milk. This, for most people, will be the most difficult product to obtain. For the simple fact that you need a cow that has given birth and not everyone has access to cows. I recommend stockpiling powdered milk, condensed milk, evaporated milk, pretty much any kind of storable milk you can get your hands on. Then make friends with someone who breeds dairy cows. Uh, this is good for two reasons. One, you'll have a source of fresh milk after a collapse, and two, you'll be supporting your local farmers. It's one of those win-win scenarios. I'm going to start by adding a cup of milk to this cup and throw it in the microwave for a minute and a half to save time. While the milk heats, uh, let's give our glaze a good stir and add the rest of the coffee. You want to stir continuously while adding the rest of the coffee. This gets the sugar and uh, that's stuck to the sides of your dish and gets to make this beautiful foam called espuza. I think that's how it's pronounced. If not, I'm sure someone will correct me. Our milk is done now and we need to just add our coffee to it. Just look at how pretty that is. I like to take the last bit of the coffee at the end and swirl it around to get the rest of the sugar out of here and into my belly. And that's all there is to it. Try this at home to see what you think. Like and subscribe if you'd like to see more. And think about other recipes that you love that you could potentially not end up having. Uh, then look at ways you can replicate those items and enjoy them regardless of what's happening in the world. Thank you for watching today's episode. And remember, in the age of information, ignorance is a choice. We'll see you next time.